It's day 30 and it's the final day. So without delay, let's get into today. So I just wanted to expand on the APC checklist to ensure everything and anything that you have to include in your submission is actually included. It's not missed, you have updated it, so you have the best and most professional submission you can produce for your experience, qualification, and pathway. But before I get into that, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to absolutely everyone who came on this journey with me. For me, I definitely put the pressure on myself to produce new content and new videos each and every day to give you an insider look at what needs to be done to complete your submission. And I appreciate and am humbled for this experience and the daily messages and questions and positivity that I've been getting. And this has been a huge factor for me to produce this content for you. Now, what should be your action items? Well, I could recommend reviewing all the videos from day one to double check that you've implemented and done everything that's recommended and then have these reviewed by your counselor to make these changes so it's perfect. So I'm going to do that today, but also I wanted to release my version of the APC checklist. Now remember, this isn't the official. What I've actually done is expanded on so you can see, read and check off that you have done absolutely everything. Now the responsibility of this is for you, the candidate, not your counselor. And while your counselor has been instrumental to make sure that your submission is updated and is great and approved by them, you to submit Everything has to be done by you as this is your submission. You're submitting it and you're getting and signing off that declaration that everything is correct. So I do recommend that we go back to the RICS assessment page. We then click on the apply for assessment and hiding in there, we should be able to scroll down and download the APC checklist. And if you want, you can get my edited version from the 30 day challenge. And before submitting anything to RICS for the upcoming windows, please double check and make sure that you're using the official versions of the RICS templates and guides. Now, once we have downloaded it, guess what? We can start going through it and I've got it on the screen for everyone now. So as you can see, this is the APC candidate application checklist. Now this was the official one, but I've gone in there and updated it and made a few things a little bit clearer that you might not be aware of. Now, remember a big thing is making sure that you are compliant with all the RICS information and obviously checklist as well. Now this includes making sure that there isn't any plagiarism as well, which is a big one, but also as well, you are required to have completed the RICS ethics or professional module within the last 12 months at the point of application. So depending on when you are submitting, please make sure that when you do submit, that it's within the past 12 months. Now, this is the checklist which I have expanded on. And the first thing I wanna do is look at the covering pages. Obviously a photo, we do need to know who you are, but I do recommend that you smile, that it's a professional photo, no sunglasses, professional attire, so you can obviously wear a tie or a nice shirt, and for it to be in a clean background or indoors as well. Check and make sure that you are on the correct pathway and you have put the correct pathway in there. Now I've gone over this initially at the beginning, but if you did sign up to RICS prior to August 2018, the chances are you might be on the pre-August 2018 pathway. If you did obviously sign up after, then you'll be on the post. Now, in regards to your counselor, you need to make sure that we have the correct details. So make sure, double check with your counselor as well that this is their correct number. If you are unsure, you can go to the RICS Find a Member tool, type in their name and it should bring it up as well. But they have to be a current member. This is sometimes overlooked where they were a member many, many years ago, but no longer now you have to have a counselor that's been supporting you that is a current member. And also as well, that they have agreed to be your counselor. This is a big thing to check out on, on as well. Now, in regards to your summary of competencies, using obviously the relevant pathway guide is recommended and selecting the most appropriate technical competencies per that pathway. So please double check the pathway guide check the number of competencies for the mandatory, the number of competencies for the technical that you need to be selecting. Also for your optional competencies, 
Make sure that you have inputted the correct levels as dictated by the pathway guide and what you are selecting. And just make sure, did you need to select optional or optional plus competencies? And you've put those in there as well. Now, if you are an APC 12 or APC 24 structured training candidate, the logbook, you need to make sure that you have done it. So for the APC 12, it's 200 days minimum that you should be recording against your technical competencies and 400 days minimum for the APC 24. You are not to record any of the mandatory competencies unless those mandatory competencies did cross over and they were some of your technical that you did select. Now, I know I did go over this a few days ago in regards to your employment and qualifications, but make sure all your relevant employment and relevant experience is updated in your submission. You have included, obviously, an overview, scope of the work, responsibilities, and the date ranges. When were you employed by that company? Now, we also do have professional body memberships that you can input, and these are other professional body memberships. So, Please put those if you have any that are full or candidate status. You are welcome to obviously put in your qualification. So if you did complete a degree, you put down that you've done a degree. If you have any other qualifications like a diploma or a certificate, you're more than welcome to add them there. Now, in regards to your summary, I know I've spent many, many weeks on this, but make sure and double check you haven't gone over that 1500 words. Have you also included all the competencies as dictated by the pathway guide? And just double check on this. Now, have you written everything to the correct level as per the pathway guide? So have you written all the level ones, all the level twos and all the level threes? Now, for your technical competencies, remember 4000 words. Same thing here as well. Is everything included? Double check that with the pathway guide and making sure as well, since, you know, the technical competencies are your day to day role, your bread and butter. Uh, make sure you have written everything to the correct level. So when you're reviewing, have you included the knowledge and understanding at level one? Have you applied or showed that application of knowledge, the doing this at a level two? And can we clearly see that you have given advice at level three? Now, each competency, make sure as well, have you written to level one, two, and three as per the pathway guide. Now, with the case study, same thing here as well, maximum 3,000 words, but have you put those words at the end of your case study? Can we see it? Do the counselors have to go through it and copy and paste and see how many words you write? Or have you remembered to put in the exact word count, which we've got space for you there as well? Have you included all your plans, references, schedules, anything relevant there? Um, so if you are saying in reference to this picture, is that picture included in your case study? That is the most important. And as well, this one I haven't edited, but based on your project or the aspect of the project, is it within 24 months? big one there. Now, as a part of your case study, you did select competencies. So make sure that you have listed all the selected competencies in that box provided on your case study template. And also have you read and complied with the confidentiality statement. Now, CPD, we all should be doing it. You might not have done all of the 48 right now, but it is recommended that before, well, it's not recommended, you have to do it, but make sure that you have the minimum 48 hours required of CPD when submitting, and a minimum of that needs to be at least formal CPD at 50%. So another thing to double check with your CPD, have you listed out all the CPD? to date that you've obviously achieved? Have you put in the total of the CPD hours? Is it in a logical date order? So please don't change dates and move it around and September is next to March while April is next to December. Put it in a logical format of how you have completed it as well. Now, this checklist as well is just to double check and make sure when you do submit, can we see within your submission, your employment, your cover letters, your summary of experience, your case study, including appendices, your CPD. So then you will then convert it into a PDF format, which you will upload in the system. Now, currently we're not using the ARC or the Assessment Resource Center. So you will be renaming that file in to include your membership number in your family name, and then you upload this to Box. But when the new Assessment Resource Center is uploaded, and depending on when you are reviewing this video, um, you might have to use a different system. And finally, before submitting, 
are you submitting for the correct window for the correct region? Just because there is a window open in the UK and if you're living in Australia, doesn't mean you can submit for that window. You only can submit for the region that you are currently residing in for that submission window, okay? Remember, the RICS support doesn't stop here and our friends at Lionheart will be holding free CPD sessions to support you and I have a few that I would recommend that you just start. The communication skills, building your confidence, and better presentation skills. These will be great to help ensure that you have the confidence in the final assessment, plus it's free CPD. Now you can find all this at lionheart.org.uk forward slash events. You are also, when you do submit, invited to the APC support sessions and training. So once you have submitted for the final assessment, the region teams will personally reach out to advise of the upcoming workshops for the final assessment preparation. So you have a better understanding of what you can do, what you need to do, and also being aware of the total interview. As our support doesn't stop, your support shouldn't stop as well. And I do recommend that everyone continues with the amazing work and dedicating to ensure that you can submit within the next few windows, but also using this information and knowledge to inspire a next generation of professionals. Share this challenge with them, the playlist or the recommendation to them or for them to start. And once you are MRICS, guess what? You can be a counselor to your peers, your colleagues, your friends to help ensure they can elevate their status to get the highest designation as well. But thank you for everyone who came to this session. I will be releasing more videos and more contents about everything RICS related. I'm Joshua Haswell. From RICS, bye for now.